Congress and the president, they may have avoided one fiscal cliff, but the compromise bill, well, it is sending us hurtling toward another. Jerry Seib, he is in Washington, D.C. He writes the Capitol Journal column. He's joined us. Jerry, we've got about 2,000 comments and counting uh, on a story we have right now on the Wall Street Journal about the fact that the debt ceiling still looms. We have another cliff right in front of us. Well, it's worse than that. We have two cliffs in front of us now. So that tells you how much hasn't been solved here in Washington in the last few days. The first cliff, as you suggest, is the debt ceiling. Uh, and nothing that happened in this end of the year deal resolved that problem, which is to say the government has actually hit its legal debt ceiling, its legal limit on borrowing. It's now living on borrowed time. The Treasury is moving some things around and allowing it to continue to borrow money to keep funding the government for about two more months. But you get to the end of February, Congress will have to act to raise that debt ceiling or we could default on, on, on U.S. government sovereign debt. So that now looms out there. And by the way, Democrats are unhappy because that's about the same time when Congress has to do something or has promised it will do something to come up with some more spending cuts as part of this deal that was done on New Year's Day. So there's a big cliff looming there where you have spending cuts and the debt ceiling both coming to a head at exactly the same time. Even if you get past that, there's another one out there, Wendy, which is that in March sometime, the government will, uh, will reach the end of the bill that has funded it, uh, right. the, the, something called a continuing resolution that continues to fund the government. That will run out. That has to be renewed as well. So there's another uh, government shutdown scenario looming uh, in the first three months of the year as well. Just when you think it's over, it is so not over. Let's, let's talk about this, Jerry. <laughs> Is it is is it compromise going to be more feasible with the new Congress that's going to be sworn in this week? You know, that is a really good question, and I wish I knew the answer. <laughs> uh, you know, on the one hand, uh, everybody's gotten kind of tired of the brinksmanship, uh, and so maybe there's a different mood. Uh, but on the other hand, you would have thought that would have uh, asserted itself a little more in the last few days of the year um, than we saw happen in the fiscal cliff negotiations. So I'm not sure. One of the realities is that the new Congress is a little more Democratic. There are a few more Democrats in the House, uh, a couple more Democrats in the Senate. The Democrats have something closer to control of the Senate. They'll have 55 Senate seats th uh, that are voting their way rather than 53. You know, those are in the th changes in the margins, but they might change the balance of power just a little bit. I think the more important thing is whether a bigger conversation gets going about whether 2013 is the year to not just survive all these near-death experiences, but to do something big, like, for example, a tax reform bill that changes the whole formula for funding the government. If that conversation gets going, then maybe you've got a better chance of having reasonable bipartisan compromise than you do if it's just, you know, one near-death experience after another. And, Jerry, for people who are out there who are listening who are saying, you know, how big of a deal is it, you know, this, this looming debt ceiling, these two fisc these two other cliffs that you're talking about coming up. Mm -hmm. If if we don't resolve these issues, talk a little bit about the ripple effects we could see with the stock market, with uh, with with the U.S.'s credit rating, any more downgrades uh, looming on the horizon. What do you foresee? Well, bumping up against that debt ceiling at the end of February or so is a big, very big deal in the sense that if you if you have default on U.S. government debt, that's a that's a real shock to financial markets, not just in the U.S. but around the world. I doubt we'll get to that point, but you're going to have some some scares along the way probably. Um, so that's that is in fact a very big deal, and the credit rating rating agencies, as you suggest, will be watching. Last time we went through this in 2011, that's when the U.S. debt got downgraded, at least by some rating agencies, and that's a scenario that's out there again. Um, I, th I think the, the broader and longer term problem here is that the sense that you'd like to create in the business community some, some feeling of certainty about what Washington's policies are is being lost in the process here. You know, business people will tell you all the time, if we just had a greater sense of certainty about what our tax rate's going to be, what the policies are going to be uh, for things like payroll taxes, then we could plan, then we might be f feel freer to invest. I don't think anything that's going on right now is creating that longer sense of certainty, and that's a psychological impact that's pretty big as well. All right, Jerry Saab, we will see if 2013 is more of the same or something new to come. Appreciate your being with us.